We've got an update for the Power BI service as well as Power BI desktop and a little bit more that's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon and today's Thursday, which means we're gonna do our information roundup here on Guy in a Cube. And it's been two weeks since I've done a roundup. And in that time, we've had a Power BI service update. We had an update for Power BI desktop and we had a few other items. So let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Gil Revive where he looks at sentiment analysis inside of Power BI. So he uses a sample data set of some Facebook posts for political items, and he walks through how you can actually do sentiment analysis with inside of Power BI Desktop. He walks you through the M syntax that he uses to make JSON calls to the Microsoft Cognitive Services, which does the sentiment analysis for you. So if you've been curious about how to actually do sentiment analysis and wanna see an actual example that's walked through this, be sure to check out this blog post also, he did a part two, and I'll link that down in the description below of to just take this post a little further. Next up is an update for Power BI Desktop, and there were a bunch of items in this update from predefined table styles to the ability to use custom maps with the shape map visualization, as well as some new data sources such as Amazon's Redshift and some updates to existing data sources, as well as some query improvements, including the ability to use custom R scripts inside of the query editor. Be sure to check out the blog post for all the new items in the July release of Power BI Desktop. Next up is the July update for the Power BI service itself, and some highlights from this update include the fact that RLS now is out of preview, it is generally available, and one of the items with that is that you can now do Analyze and Excel on RLS-enabled datasets. Another big item is the data-driven alerts, and you can configure data-driven alerts for numeric tiles, such as either the card or a gauge inside of your dashboard. That's pretty cool. You can actually get alerted now when that data changes. Data classification now is also available with inside of the admin portal. You can set up classifications for your dashboard. So from a Microsoft side, we talk about high business impact, medium business impact, and you can actually put those coatings on the dashboard so people can see what they are. There were also some updates to the Analyze in Excel feature itself that included the ability to analyze in Excel on your on-premises analysis services data. So be sure to check out this blog post to see all the updates in July for Power BI. If you wanted to create real-time dashboards inside of Power BI, but you don't want to use Stream Analytics to do that, well, now you can actually create a real-time data set inside of Power BI. This is done with inside of the actual Power BI service, and you can define what that data set is, and you use the REST APIs to push data into that data set. This will enable a data set with real-time data that you can actually create dashboard and visualizations on top of. Be sure to check out this blog post if that interests you, and if you have a developer mindset and you want to actually take advantage of real-time dashboards. Okay, let me know which item was your favorite. Go ahead and leave that in the poll up above or down in the comments below, or let me know if there was something that you like that I didn't mention. As always, the links for all the items I mentioned are in the description below as well. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every Thursday I do a roundup video and every Tuesday I do a tech video where I look at a new feature, how something works, or just how to troubleshoot something. So thanks for watching and keep being awesome.